What's up everybody, it's Simon from Lake Hub. Today, I am just southwest of the Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas line at Wright-Patman Lake. Wright-Patman Lake is about 20,000 acres. Uh, there's about 170 miles of shoreline, a 40 foot max depth. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, if you're an outdoorsman or outdoors woman, this is a great lake. Between fishing and hunting, this is a sportsman's paradise. This lake was originally built in the 1940s and 50s by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It was originally called Texarkana Reservoir. It was built mainly for flood control. It was renamed for Congressman Wright Patman in the 1970s. Wright Patman Lake is fed by the Sulphur River and it is wild, it is rural. It's fun to explore, but it's not a boating tourist come out and have a vacation lake. It is a go fishing, go hunt some ducks lake. Like much of the Arklatex region of, you know, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, the original inhabitants in this area were the Caddo Nation. The Caddo Nation uh, was this conglomerate of uh, Indian tribes that all kind of worked together. And post-treaty, the Caddo have moved to Oklahoma, but that's, those are the original OG inhabitants in this area. What's kind of interesting about Western Arkansas, Northwestern Louisiana, East Texas, is that it was never really frontier country. Oh, it, it was kind of like this kind of no man's land for a long time. Uh, it, it, it was kind of agreed upon that it's not really French, it's not really Spanish, and then you know, for a time it wasn't really Mexico. And then, you know, part of the settlements kind of voted for statehood and joined Texas. Uh, but it's always been this kind of like, it's, it's not really frontier. There's just kind of people moving in and stuff. And what was part of the culture is that Southerners with money relocated here to expand their, you know, plantation opportunities, basically. So uh, a lot of a lot of the old money is going to be, you know, uh, back in the day was corn, hogs, that sort of thing. These days, this area is all about timber. There are lots of people who grow pine, uh, southern pine trees on their land and produce, this area produces a lot of timber. There's, you know, paper mills, sawmills, and you see logging trucks all the time out around Wright Patman Lake. Now, as far as the scenery around the lake itself, a lot of deciduous trees, late fall, we're coming into winter. And uh, so not a lot of green going on. This lake is really, really, really pretty when everything's green because uh, a lot of times you'll have fog on the lake and it's just, it looks really, really scenic. It's really cool. For fishing, uh, great fishing lake. A lot of people fish this lake for catfish, uh, especially locals um, love this lake for catfish. Uh, been told, haven't tried myself, but been told that they have a unique flavor because of the Sulphur River. Uh, don't know how different and don't know in what way, not yet. Maybe I'll come out here in the springtime and fish. Besides catfish, you have all the usuals. You have largemouth bass, you have white bass, and of course crappie. There are uh, a lot of like islands and kind of a lot of brush you know, high brush, low brush, um, kind of islands of brush. So uh, to me, just eyeball test, uh, it looks like a really, really good crappie lake. Being a flood control river, the lake level varies quite a bit here. Uh, we're kind of getting downstream. The closer you get to, to the Gulf, the closer you get to Louisiana, uh, the more, you know, the, the fluctuations from other lakes upstream are gonna affect this lake. And so because of that, the fishing changes all the time, right? Because if your lake level changes, then your depths change and then the structure at those depths change. And so you really kind of have to be on your toes if you like fishing. Shore access is pretty limited here. Again, it's a rural lake. Uh, there are boat ramps. I'm standing one right here. It's unimproved. It's a dirt boat ramp and it's muddy, you know, so you kind of got to watch it. Um, but really, if you, if you can get on the water, that's the best way to enjoy this lake, whether you're hunting or you're fishing. Get, in, get on the water, get mobile because the shore access 
is rural and difficult. Wherever there is access, there's often a boat ramp. So there are lots of boat ramps, um, but they're just not, you know, big slick, you know, marina boat ramps. You know, it's, it's, it's a way to get your boat in the water. And that's it, nothing fancy. There are lots of hiking trails around here if you're into that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, when and where and all that kind of stuff. They're kind of, you know, again, dispersed. It's Army Corps land. Um, there's a lot of places where people have even kind of made trails uh, just for the purpose of access or hunting um, or even, you know, kind of four-wheeling. Um, so there are official and unofficial trails. Uh, there are, there, there's lots and lots of land to explore like to the tune of like 70 to 80,000 acres of land to explore around here. A lot of it is huntable through the Army Corps of Engineers. And of course, on the lake, um, it's a really awesome bird lake. So bird watching, uh, lots of bird activity on the lake. Waterfowl, uh, really popular spot for duck hunting, especially for Texarkana. And uh, I've personally, uh, I hunt deer out in this area and I've seen bald eagles and that is a sight to see right there. So if you're the outdoor sporting type, come on out and visit Wright Patman Lake in Northeast Texas. Catch some fish, bag some ducks, have some fun outside and we'll see you out there.